Well, as we approach what promises to be one of the most hotly contested elections in the democratic South Africa, it is important for every eligible voter to be afforded an opportunity to participate in the electoral process. Ilemba District, Ugu, Eteguini, as well as Umgungun Lovu District are economic hubs of KZN with a high number of young people and generally low voter turnout. Will there be any means made for voter education? Um, uh, voter education to reach those who are displaced by floods and still have no form of identification. To discuss this, we are now speak to the KwaZulu Natal Speaker of uh, the Legislature, Nondobego Boys. Um, speaker, good morning. Thank you so much for making time for us. Um, first of all, before we deal with the repercussions of what happened with the 2022 floods, we see that another alert has been issued by the Weather Services, a warning for. Um, are there any preparations that you know of from the various municipalities to ensure that people who live in areas that could be affected do find a safe place for shelter? Good morning, Aldrin and uh, the viewers. Yes, yes. Unfortunately, we have seen that there is a, a, a warning that is out. And we have also, as an institution that is responsible for oversight, noted that the Metro of Eteguini has issued a warning and has said that their disaster management are in place. We have also checked with the Department of the Cooperative Governance and Traditional Affairs in the province on their state of readiness, as we can see that the warnings are coming and we remember what happened last year. They have assured us that they have also issued the warning and their disaster management um, authorities are standing in, in place so that when there is eventually that, which we hope may not happen, they will be able to come in and intervene. Yeah. Um, and what are the lessons then that have been learned from the 2022 floods and also how government responds to natural disasters, considering that right now we still have some people um, who are displaced, who haven't really found a place that they can call their own homes? We have learned as a province, especially on the oversight, that the legislature should be closer to areas when there is um, a disaster, so that the, the recovery period is also monitored in terms of accountability and ensuring that people find a placement as, as, as fast as possible. We went last year to go, I think it was almost a week after the, 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 the disaster of last year, where we still found people that were still uh, distressed. We also noted then that it's not only the substantial assistance that is needed in such areas, the psychosocial assistance is also needed. So we have learned that we need to have our own municipalities trying to educate people in terms of SPLUMA, the act that determines where people should be building and where people should not be building. We are not saying these disasters only affected people that were in, in, in areas that they should not be. But there were people that were in areas that were waterclogged and areas that you find that the recovery will not even allow the people to come and, and, and reside in those areas once more. But importantly and lastly is the issue that comes with the trauma, especially when they are family members that would pass and their bodies would not be found. So mm -hmm. we thought that as, as a province, we need to go together with our structures, community structures, as well as uh, families in ensuring that when there is a time of, of disaster, we are close to each other to bring support yeah. in, in any form that the victims may need. Yeah, we also saw with the most recent um, incidents that happened in uh, the Western Cape as well as uh, the Eastern Cape where we had those um, raging waves as well as the tides that affect those parts of um, the, two, the two provinces. One of the issues that was raised, actually I guess one of the communities as well in KZN was affected. One of the issues that was raised by the engineers is around developments and developments that happen on the coastal lines. And developers do have a lot of money, um, Speaker. Developers have a lot of money and uh, the provinces also require a level of development uh, to help create jobs. But making sure that those developments happen in places where you try as much as possible to reduce the risk of losing lives because we know that climate change is affecting the world. 
Indeed, indeed. The issue of developments that need to be monitored must be followed, but mostly those developments are happening within municipalities. It is then in that regard that the legislature puts the portfolio committee on cooperative governance in ensuring that there is follow-up on what the municipalities have done to rectify what happened in 2022. We, we think that when we also together both society and the, inv uh, the investors work in a manner that would not necessarily put profit first, but also put uh, the lives of the people at the top and abide with the laws because there are necessary laws. There are relevant laws in South Africa, especially when it comes to issues of development and where we build, and those laws must be followed. Maybe on our side as oversight, we also have not been that close in looking at developments and ensuring that they are in line with the, with the, with the relevant laws and bylaws. So, when I speak of oversight, I'm not only speaking of the legislature, I'm also speaking of councils because councils are also providing oversight in the spaces that they are in. So we have started to have these hearings with municipalities led by our portfolio committees, especially in these areas that are seem to be prone to, to these disasters currently. So we hope that it's going to be time mm. that all of us understand that there is a contribution by each and every sector in ensuring that we stop the, 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 the disasters. But also as a legislature, we also felt that beyond this, let's also start as, as a public participation institution. Let's also start a program that is going to create awareness about the issues of climate change. Yeah. We are doing it in line with the, together with the children's uh, parliament in the legislature to educate, especially the young, about climate change and what must be done to ensure that we protect the environment. And speaking about the young, also the campaigns ahead of uh, the general elections next year, 2024, um, the voter registration weekend, the first one coming up next month in November. What plans does the legislature have to also educate young people who want to participate in the elections and even those who are a bit apathetic, who don't want to participate? How do you encourage them to participate in these elections and ensuring that they have the necessary documents? The legislature, of course, Rona Dahl, has partnered with the IEC as well as the Department of Home Affairs. We have what we usually do a year before elections, what is called civic education, where we go to community to educate people about the needs to, 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 to vote and why people should be voting. In the past, we used to also uh, concentrate on, 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 on the actual voting. But this time we have decided to go to the youth and show that they have the ID so that the decision lies with them and they are registered. We started the program uh, at the Mangosutu University of Technology and other surrounding areas in Deben, where we were having IDs, that, those that needed to have IDs issued for the first time, they were given them by Home Affairs. The application process was made. And those that need to have replacements, they were also allowed. And we have taken it now to Umkungulovu after Etegwini. Last, uh, last Tuesday, we were in Herigwala. We will continue doing this educative program. What we have noted is that many of the young people in South Africa, especially the first time voters, I don't know where they got it. We're having a notion that they would wait. Others were coming to register now that they are 23, 24, 25, saying that they feel that they are old enough to vote. Mm. And we have felt that there is a lack of understanding that as soon as you are 18, it's important that you make yourself to be part of the decision making in the, in, in the country. Young people are also interested in voting. We noted it in some areas, but due to the issues of them having parents working that are not able to accompany them to the Department of Home Affairs, they still do not have ID documents, even though they have birth certificates. So with us bringing um, Department of Home Affairs closer to them, they were able to have their IDs, apply for the IDs, and they were issued. I must say that when we started with Eteguini, the group that we started with, they already have received their IDs. So we are going to be continuing with that, doing that advocacy. But we have also 
in partnership with parties that are in the legislature, they are also going to be taking it to be a continuous program in their constituency offices. IEC is on the spot to allow those who want to change the, the registration of voting district and also register the new ones. Thank you so much for your time. That is the provincial speaker of KwaZulu Natal, Nondobego Boys. Thank you so much for making time for us. So, as she said, they go out and register. Remember that the first registration registration weekend will be this um, next month, actually in November. That's when uh, the IEC have set the date for the first registration uh, vo voter registration campaign. So, go out and vote, and also make sure that you are registered in the area that you live in.